Hello. Hi. I'm Don Hinkleman and I teach at Sapporo Gakuin University in Japan. And I'm delighted to be here today for your Digital Thursday at the Krakow University of Pedagogy. And uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Joanna Pitura for inviting me. And uh, we met at uh, the European Call Conference, Computer Assisted Language Learning Conference in Belgium this year. And she kindly invited me to this uh, Digital Thursday presentation. And what I'm going to talk about today is called task ethnography. And it is a research methodology for us classroom researchers to learn about how we can understand uh, technology, both face-to-face -face technologies and digital technologies, how they interact and how they help learning processes in our classrooms. So uh, I'm going to uh, show you some slides today. And uh, uh, the, the subtitle is Qualitative Research Approaches for Blended Language Learning Environments. And uh, uh, take a look at this picture right here. You see a classroom, an elementary school classroom. And here you can see students in various tables, standing, presenting, teachers, uh, wall presentations, computers, all of these things are part of the ecology of a classroom. Now the key points I'm going to tell you today is that learning is blended, teaching is bricolage, and research is ecological. Let me explain those to you. First of all, how do you study a computer-assisted or blended language learning environment? Well, my motivation came uh, uh, t almost 20 years ago when I read Kern and Warshower uh, for my PhD. And uh, in, in their, in their uh, paper, they said, call needs more contextual inquiry. They need to use ethnographic methods. And I was struck by that. And uh, I began to understand the problems of scientific inquiry. Scientific research methods are designed for specific either-or questions, but they're not designed for complex environments, for understanding uh, the total complexity of various actors and influences in classrooms, institutions, and other education environments. So what is a, an example of a contextual inquiry? Well, action research is one method, and ethnography is another method. Action research employs insider status. You're using your own classroom as an action researcher, and the aim is interventions. Implement change and document what's happening. Ethnography seeks to describe, to use thick descriptions of what is happening, of the culture of the classroom, of what it is happening in tasks and in the institution. It is often outsider status. Here is a, a picture of a, uh, two books that informed me about the teacher's role in the classroom, which I call bricolage. Bricolage means making do. It's taking all the devices and tools and papers and, and ideas and everything in the learning process and putting together a lesson that students can enjoy and students can learn from. That's configuring a classroom lesson to do a learning task. That's bricolage. A bricoleur is a teacher who configures all of these different things. Techniques, tools, software, hardware, furniture, screens, to do a task. Uh, in uh, my first book with Paul Gruba, we define blended language learning as a mix of online and on-site, face-to-face, digital and paper media in a language learning environment. 
We defined it as a process, not a device, but a process of actions, timings, groupings, spaces, text, and tools. Now these six points we'll come back to again and again. This is a framework, a framework for understanding a blended learning environment. Blending, in the second book, I wrote second edition, which came out in 2018. I wrote that blending is a strategy also. It is the strategy of flipped learning, task-based learning, and active learning and gamification. Um, it is not a device, but a community. We're looking at a community of practice with learners and teachers. Scientific thinking, however, tries to separate entities. Not look at relations, but separate entities. It looks at variables and defines variables, independent variables, compares this tool with that tool to make a generalization. However, ecological thinking does not worry about generalizations because every classroom environment is different. You can get insights from other classrooms, but yours is different, so you cannot generalize. The relations are connected. The contexts are complex. So, in order to understand an ecology, we need to describe what is happening there. Rather than experimental studies and hypothesis testing, we do qualitative interpretive inquiry, longitudinal inquiry, action research cycles, descriptive ethnographic methods, and we choose a blended learning framework to make those descriptions. This is the dichotomy of separated entities. It's me versus the technology. Me versus the... the devices. But if we think of technology more broadly, and face-to-face -face interactions are also technologies, we can have a different view. We can go from outside of me, separated devices, invading threat or tri triumphant savior, to something that is inside of the classroom, inside of me. It's an ecosystem a generic process that is human and material hybrid. This is one image of eth ecological thinking. Here's another image from the individual to the community to the ecosystem to the biome. Think of different scales in an ecology. This is a natural ecology of a small community. Now, moving to a learning ecology, you take that metaphor and you apply it to the classroom. And here are the various parts of the ecology. The chair, the dictionary, the teacher, the student, the notebook, the pencils, the eraser, the door, the curtain, the lights. And even more detailed are the emotional things that are happening here. The interactions that may not be designed, okay? A student coughing, to collaborating, okay? Playing around, coming late, cleaning up, offering something to a friend, hugging. Let's take a look at an actual classroom here at Sapporo Gakuin University and uh, just Here's a picture of our uh, school up in northern Japan and where it's already snowing outside in, in our winter here. And this is one of our teachers and he's explaining a task, how to do, uh, how to talk about yourself, introduce yourself. The task is what we call Jiko Shokai or a self-introduction task. And here he's giving a demonstration to the students. Notice how they are configured in a group and how this group can switch to pair work or computer work. 
Here is another classroom, and in this classroom the students have left their desks to go to the computers on the periphery, while at the same time the teacher is doing an assessment task, is doing a one-to-one -one interview on the side while they are doing other work here. This shows how uh, group work and pair work can be combined in a computer classroom and how a teacher can switch between them easily. This shows that even in a computer room you can do face-to-face -face technologies such as the parallel line technology. In this case students do speaking tasks for one minute, switch, and switch partners again and again and again. So they can repeat the task with a new listener, with someone with new interest. So what we have is a face-to-face -face technology in fast pair switching, also called carouseling. Combined with recording that's uploaded to an LMS like Moodle or other uh, kind of computer technology. And this is called blended language learning. What research methodology do you use for blended language learning? Well, um, ethnography and action research are two, two ones that I uh, recommend. And you can read more about this in my book. If you wish, you can. Um, uh, Joanna has the chapters that I wrote about these. You're welcome to read them. An ethnography looks at classroom ethnography, institutional ethnography, or task ethnography for a micro view. Action research looks at interventions psych and cycles. Now, to describe the blending, you have to remember that all teaching and learning is blended. Here are, is the framework that I'd like you to pay attention to. First of all, it's actions, types of actions lectures, narratives, interactive, pair work, adaptive, changing to the needs of the learner, communicative, group work, discussion, and productive, performances. It's groupings. It's the way we group students, individual and pair, or small and large group. It's the timings. Is it, face, is it live or is it recorded? Asynchronous. Is it single or multi-session or in parallel? Spaces, classroom, online, home, community are all different spaces that students are using to learn in. Finally, it is texts, which are words, images, audio, video, and spoken texts as well. Tools include digital tools, analog tools, materials, furniture, electronics. This is a framework for us to describe, do an ethnographic description. Now, how do you do that? Here are five steps for doing a task ethnography. First of all, you define your task. What is it? Two lessons? Two, three lessons in one task? Or is it one lesson? You collect data by dimension by those six dimensions, photos, videos, forms, procedures, interviews, teaching materials, surveys, assessments. Next, you write descriptions of that, of each dimension, step by step. Each technology is a step. You do an online face-to-face -face description. You conceptualize what's happening in the classroom. This conceptualized the carouseling technology by five dimensions. Okay, The type of action, the timing, the texts and the devices, the paper texts and vocal texts, and the groupings and spaces. Here's an example of the carouseling technology that we can describe. Then you organize it into a task and show technology one, technology two, technology three, technology four, and how they accomplished a task. 
Some tasks may be parallel, like doing quizzes at home. Again, conceptualize the various dimensions that happen in doing this task. Finally, evaluate and assess the task. This is collecting data um, of how well the students performed. This may be rubric data, it may be survey data, questionnaire and interview data. Some of the modes of assessment may be self-assessment, peer assessment, teacher assessment, and the whole class assessment. And I believe strongly that your assessment should be in terms of task performance or can-do statements. As you know, Sefer has created new ways for us to assess language learning in can-do skills and statements. This is a technology analysis of an EFL speech-making task by one, two, three, four, five different dimensions. So in conclusion, I will tell you that the way to research blended learning is through contextual inquiry. And contextual inquiry can involve action research and ethnography. And if you want to start, I recommend start with task ethnography and look at a particular lesson and describe how you, as a bricoleur, built this little classroom exercise and how well the students accomplished their task. We can gain insights, not generalizations, from that description. And you can publish that as your research or your team's research in blended language learning journals. Thank you very much. And thank you all for uh, uh, inviting me here to you in Poland, and I look forward to uh, conversation afterwards uh, or in the future. Thank you.